Coming up, we'll tell you what do we know about a weekend wildfire in western Kelloland. Plus, we take you out to Catfish Bay for a look at the 10th annual Ice Fish Fest. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Authorities have recovered the body of Amy Doherty, ending more than a month of searching for the missing woman. The Dade County Sheriff says Doherty and her vehicle were recovered from a slough west of Bristol on Friday. Doherty had been missing since December 23rd when she left for work during a blizzard. Wildfires are a danger in western Kelloland, even in the middle of winter. Crews were busy Saturday responding to this wildfire in the area of Aspen Grove Lane, which is west of the town of Custer. The Sheriff's Department posted on Facebook that no structures were immediately threatened. Turning to weather now, colder temperatures are on their way to Kettleland. Let's see how cold it could get with meteorologist Scott Munt. Yeah, we are looking at sharply colder air just in time for this coming weekend. But before then, temperatures will be above average, even though we'll stay with the cloud cover in eastern South Dakota. And then we are looking at the above average temperatures that continue in many locations, probably through Thursday. And Thursday may bring around the snow. As I mentioned, much colder air on the way for the coming weekend. More details on that with Brian Karstens coming up. Thank you, Scott. According to Sunday's report from the South Dakota Department of Health, there are 179 new cases of COVID-19 in the state. That brings a total number of cases to 108,250 since the pandemic began. Just over 2,800 of those cases are active. Health officials also reported three new deaths on Sunday, bringing the death toll to just under 1,800. However, the number of people hospitalized fell to 125 on Sunday, down 20 from Saturday. Updated numbers will be released later this morning. The South Dakota Department of Health is asking for volunteers to help with the distribution of vaccinations as the state's vaccine allocation grows. Volunteers can sign up to either administer the shots or help with clerical work, something Christina Wee of Sioux Falls is offering to do. I think that all of us have been wondering since the pandemic started how we can help. And I saw this press release go out and I knew that, you know, I can't help administer shots. I'm not a nurse, but there was other opportunities. And I thought, hey, I can do data entry and clerical work. And so it's just my little part of trying to help life kind of get back to normal. The Department of Health says more than 1,000 people have signed up to help. People are mourning the loss of Mel Antonin, a South Dakota Sports Hall of Fame member, now being remembered by Major League Baseball, the Washington Nationals, and Baltimore Orioles. According to the South Dakota Sports Hall of Fame's website, Antonin graduated from Hamlin High in 1974 and Augustana in 1979. Sunday afternoon, we had a chance to talk with former Kelloland News reporter Kevin Wooster about Antonin. Wooster worked with him in the early 80s. Uh, I knew he would be successful at something because he's he's this genuine person and he and and through the years as he became this amazingly successful sports writer on the national scene and just you know we just was like every year we thought wow there goes Mel higher and higher and didn't change at all I mean he was still this kid from Lake Norton always Kevin Wooster first met Antonin in the early 80s when they were both writing for the Argus Leader there is so much more to learn about Mel Antonin's legacy, including his unique interview with Joe DiMaggio and the inspiration Antonin can be for young writers. You can read all of this in a digital exclusive content in a report right here on Kelloland.com. Hundreds of anglers took to the frozen water at Catfish Bay Saturday to compete in the Ice Fish Fest. Organizers say it's the biggest year they've seen in the 10 years of the event. What have you enjoyed about fishing so far? Um, well, last year we didn't really get anything because we were under, a, we were right above a Christmas tree. But this year we've gotten like five fish so far. I mean, that, that first half hour, hour, it's kind of a feeding frenzy. It's just crazy how it works. But we, just, we, we probably just went through 100, you know, 100 people shortly, you know, weighing in fish. And they'll probably catch over 1,000 fish today out here at Catfish Bay. A big draw was the $5,000 cash prize for catching the biggest fish. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, weather today. Well, clouds and fog issues. East, we have sunshine west. That's kind of the story there. You can see that line just a little west of Pier now on the fog this morning. And again, as we go throughout the morning, I think we can get rid of some of the fog. But the clouds, the overcast skies and Sioux Falls, just a little harder to break up here uh, with that light wind. We just don't have a lot of uh, current in the atmosphere to kind of move things around here. So if we get any glimpses of sun, be thankful for that the next couple of days because clouds are 
more favorable. And we see tonight, too, again, kind of the same pattern setting up. Some fog issues in the central in the morning. Sun, hopefully, though, for central western South Dakota Tuesday. And it is milder. West River, folks, 40s, 50s are very common the next couple of days. Getting into Wednesday's forecast, uh, we do see more wind picking up out of the south. And that should help temperatures in Sioux Falls to warm into the 40s. But that's ahead of this, the coldest air of the winter so far. It is coming for the weekend. Looks like we're going to deal with that probably at least in a couple different rounds, and we'll evaluate more on that as we go through time. But just a sample of highs on Saturday. Look at that. Single digits above and below zero across much of South Dakota, North Dakota, and Minnesota. And uh, not much different on Sunday. In fact, if anything, it might actually be colder by them. We'll see how the timeline goes, but looks much colder at that point. 33 today, Mitchell. We're looking at 37 degrees in Chamberlain as fog breaks up. Your seven-day forecast, climbing numbers through midweek, and then Thursday, chance of snow. Looks like colder winds. Temperatures falling into the single digits and lower teens this weekend in the southeast. I think Aberdeen could be stuck in the single digits both days of the weekend. Obviously, with those kind of numbers, too. Any wind, and we're going to be talking about wind chill values that will start making a few headlines. So stay tuned for that. Here also looks like some chances of snow as that cold or air works in. Not necessarily a heavy snow, but there could be a couple batches around on Friday and Saturday. Rapid City also looking or trending colder with highs in the 30s by the start of the weekend and then much colder by Saturday and Sunday. Check out details with your weather online right here at Kettleland.com.